to shake hands with the person beside you, behind you, in front of you. God is awesome.
in order that we can actually get a do-over or a mulligan. Amen. How many like mulligans? I'm not talking mulligans too. I'm talking about mulligan on the golf course. You know, I think it's on the first on the first hole only. You hit the far first ball, you don't like it, you get a chance to hit it again. Am I saying it correctly, golf people? I reckon everybody else is illiterate to golf as I am. Amen. But there is a thing called a mulligan. Amen. A chance to do over again. Turn to Philippians chapter 2. Let us stand for the reading of God's word. Philippians chapter 2. And this is going to be a, this started out to be a one sermon. I don't know how many sermons this one's going to be, but it's going to be on this. Again, again, let me ask you a question. How many has heard the TV preachers and the radio preachers and other people in the ministry tell you that 2000, and they say it every year. 2017 is going to be your best year. 2018 is going to be your best year. Well, I can promise you 2018 was not my best year. Amen? It was, and at the end, the ending for Bethany was better. It was great. It was better. You couldn't do any better. But getting there was tough. So, so 2018 was not my best year. But 2019, you say, well, 2019, what if and what for and all this stuff, what could have, should have, would have, if I just said 2019 is going to be this year, the best year, you just sit here and hold your hands and wait for God to do something and say, well, he didn't do it again. That's not what we're talking about. If you want your best year this year, you do something. You do it. I love it. Out, try to outgive God. Try to outdo God. That has challenged me so strong. It's been, in my, it's been raining in my head like a mighty bell. Amen. It keeps ringing. Philippians 2. Let's just go ahead and read this, read it from the very beginning. Philippians chapter 2. If, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if there if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. What it's saying is, look, look, being one accord and one mind, you need to be together, but not only be together, you need to be together. There's a lot of couples that are together, but they're not together. There's a lot of churches that are together, but they're not together. What am I talking about? Oh, we're going to be together in body, but we're not together in mind and in spirit. We're not together in unity like it should be. And so it says, I don't want you just to be together physically, which is important. I want you to be together emotionally and be together mentally. So, that nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in loveliness of mind, that each esteem themselves better, or uh, others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but let every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's stretch forth your hands this way. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for your awesome, awesome touch. I thank you, God, also, not only for your touch, but I thank you, God, that each day you challenge us. And so many times we just sit back and ignore the challenge and just wait for you to fill our cup. God, let me not just be a cup this year, but let me be a conduit. God, in the name of Jesus, I just don't want to be a vessel that collects stuff from you, God, but I want to be a channel that stuff pours in and goes back out and others get blessed because you have blessed me. I ask you right now, Lord, to touch us all and have that attitude. That's the attitude Jesus had. His attitude was, I'll go as low as I need to go to pick my people up as high as they need to be. Lord, let us have that same kind of attitude. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we love you. And we praise your name and we thank you for your grace and your mercy. The church said, Amen. Amen. You be seated on the way down, shake somebody's hand, give them a high five, low five, no five. Tell them it's great to be in the house of the Lord. And then ask them, do you want, a, you want an awesome 2019? Ask them that. 
Okay, then tell them this. Look, then do it. Then do it. Then do it. You know, uh, I, I sat back here and I was looking at this, and, and as I was thinking about this, and as I was reading over and thinking about this year, you know, 2018 had, there's been the good, the bad, the ugly, amen. Clint Eastwood weren't even there. There was the good, there was the bad, there was the ugly, and the, big, and the biggest, ugliest of all, there was still good to be found. There were still things going on. There was all kinds of things I could, you know, we could all look back and say, well, if it hadn't been for this, I'd have had a good year. Well, if it hadn't been for this or them or whatever, uh, I'd have had a good year. You know, matter of fact, uh, how many, <coughs> how many right now, you look back over 2018, and you look at 2019, and you say, God, I sure hope this is going to be better. Amen? I mean, it's, it's got to be better. Amen. Watch this now. This is the challenge the Lord gave me. And he gave me some more stuff when I got here. So I had to rewrote part of the sermon when I got here due to God using some, some mighty men to, to help me read the red. Ready? If you want 2019 to be awesome, first, you've got to, to realize that you, take your finger and do like this, you have a very powerful part to play. Don't just sit back and wait for God to pour it on you. Don't just sit back. you got a very important part to play. And you have to do this. So watch this now first. Number one, your attention. Or look, your attention. Pay attention to what you see. Look at what I, what I see, when I see it. God, give me my attention. Let me see what I need to see. You know, why do I ride down the road? You go, did you see that tree? And they go, no. And she goes, don't you ever see anything? Come on, fellas, y'all ever heard that? Are you ever looking when you ride down the road? I go, yes, I'm looking, but while you're looking at the tree, I just noticed that brand new Mustang. That's awesome. Matter of fact, I'd love to race him, but he would make me feel very bad if I even acted like I was going to do it. Or right now, or seeing something, so I says, but did you notice this? Well, it's all your perspective, what you notice. Uh, I notice the Mustang, my wife notices the tree. The tree will be there for a long time. The Mustang is just going by. Amen. So, look, then your attitude. Your attitude is actually how we think about what we see. You know, uh, uh, when I see people hurting, what, what do I want to do? When I see people uh, uh, in pain, how am I going to respond? What am I thinking about that? I'm going to think, well, it don't bother me because it's not me hurting. It doesn't bother me because I've got no part to play in it. You know, since you got to think, it's in this year, you got to think about your, your, your attitude, but also your actions. Because a lot of times, this, this was from this morning, remember, I should have, but I would have, but. If I could tell you how many times I've heard that. Let me tell you how many times I've heard that. Can I tell you, be honest with you, how many times I have said that. Am I the only one in here that said that? I would have, but. Amen? So, so I'm going to go back to that in just a minute. <laughs> I can't wait. It's the next slide. I can't hardly wait. Uh, or maybe it's the slide after that. Amen? So, so, build a better you. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That word mind is actually, watch this, that word mind is attitude. Let this attitude that was in Christ be also in you. Think about how Jesus handled things. You know, I had somebody challenge me the other day, and man, it blew me away. He, 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 he come up to me, and he doesn't know how I preach. He doesn't know my, my story. But he just come up to me, and we're talking and he's talking about himself. But as he's talking about himself and how God had convicted him, it began to convict me. He said, when, he said, he used to go to people and he was so busy telling them what was wrong and how everything was wrong and blah, 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 and sin, sin, sin. He said, I didn't realize it. He said, but I made sin bigger than God. And I said, come on now, what are you talking about? You made sin bigger than God. He said, if all I ever talk about is sin, 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 and don't do this, and don't, 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 and I don't talk about how great God is, and how God is greater than this sin, and how God can overcome this, and how God has 
greater than all this. He says that I make the sin bigger than God. And he says, I've come in my heart to a place where I understand that I have to make God the bigger one in my life. And when I talk to people, I need to talk to them about how big God is and show him how big God is no matter what you've done. And he says, then no longer is the sin the big part in life, but God's grace. So it's so an attitude. He said, let his attitude be in you. That word be means constant. Right now, constant. That means right now and constant. So, so, so I don't just need to bring this attitude to church with me. And then when I get out, it's gone. I, I don't need just to bring it to my family, but nobody else's family. I don't just need to bring this attitude with me with certain parts of my family, but not other parts of my family. I need to bring this attitude with me wherever, not just watch this now, here's two ways to look at it. Wherever I go, or think about it this way, wherever God places me. Because sometimes you think you're just going along and you just haphazardly run into somebody, and you find out, wait a minute, this was a God moment. God put me here, I didn't even realize it. I, I took the wrong turn somewhere, and I wound up in the store trying to find directions of why I'm ministering to somebody because God allowed me to get lost so I could go in that store so I could ask directions so that I could wind up ministering to that person. So think about the God moments in your life. So let this mind, of course, be in you personally. We're so good at telling others how to be good Christians and how, to, how they need to be this and how they need to do that. I challenge you this year, if you in 2019 to be your best year, Instead of trying to find ways other Christians can be better Christians, think about yourself first. How can I be a better Christian? How can I do that different? How, how can I say things different? How, how can I do this? What, what can I do with the mind of Christ, the attitude of Christ, that's consistent with Him and consistent with my walk and consistent with what He wants me to be? So, so, so here it is. This is, uh, this is you know, matter of fact, uh, I actually wrote it down as one of the saddest statements, one of the emptiest sentences that I ever hear, and I'm guilty of saying it myself. I meant to, but. I meant to, but. You know, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that because in a minute you're going to, I found some stuff that I didn't even think about, and it's so awesome. Amen. But we live in a society that's so busy trying to blame instead of pulling the responsibility. We play the blame game. It's easier to play the blame game. If I play the blame game, then I don't have to take any responsibility for my actions. If I play the blame game, then I can act the way I want to, and still everything's cool instead of blaming. Should take it to myself. So watch this. I love this. Look, look, look. Jesus' attitude toward others was he was a servant. And his attitude toward himself was, I will do what God wants me to do, and I'll be okay. But however, however, he does this. So now watch this. Quit looking out, out to find someone or something to blame and start looking in and take responsibility. Quit looking out, trying to find somebody. You always got somebody on the hook that I can blame. Because if I blame them, then all of a sudden, I minimize my actions and maximize theirs. I minimize well, however bad I do, I minimize it. And I maximize however small theirs is, I make it big. Because now I'm blaming instead of taking responsibility. I love this. Y'all get ready. How many Bible scholars we got in here? Did you know this is from the lost book of Yemen? There's a lost book, lost biblical book called Yemen. You ever heard of Yemen? Anybody heard of Yemen? <laughs> What's well, this? The prophet Yemen says, you ever heard of the prophet Yemen? Where did you say that was between Eddie? Uh, first opinion, then second. <laughs> First opinions of sacred traditions is the book of Yemen. All right. The prophet Yemen says, watch this. Anything.
anything before but that you say doesn't really matter. You ever try to set somebody up with somebody else? Well, he's a he, he he's got a he's got a wonderful personality. He's got a great job, but <laughs> to get everything before that. <laughs> Well, that's a good guy. I like being around that guy. That guy makes me laugh, and we have a good time, and we serve the Lord together, but we get everything before him. Well, he's a, he, he's a good father, and he takes care of his children, but anything you say before but is canceled out by the but. Y'all aren't listening, are you? Or you're listening and you're thinking. Okay, good. <clears throat> good. Watch this. It's so cool. I thought this was cool. Mighty army, take the sentence I meant to, but I need vocabulary. I'm not pointing just one finger out. I got four pointing back at me. Take the word, the sentence I meant to, but out <coughs> of your vocabulary. Watch this. Abraham Lincoln said, of course, if you look on the internet, everything all they say is said by Abraham Lincoln or Benjamin Franklin. Amen. Abraham said, saw one that on the internet that said, if it was quoted by Benjamin Franklin, it must be truth. If it was quoted on the internet and it says by Benjamin Franklin, it must be true. Sign Benjamin Franklin. Okay. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln said, said a house a house built with the nails of excuses will always fall. Another saying <laughs> put Benjamin Franklin, Eleanor Roosevelt, whoever you want in it. Another saying is if you want to get it done you'll find a way. If you don't you'll find an excuse. Another one, if it's important to you, you'll find a way. If it's not, you'll find an excuse. <laughs> it's important to me that 2019 is an awesome year for a lot of people. But in order for it to be an awesome, awesome year for a whole bunch of people, I've got to stop saying I meant to, but. Because I meant to, but actually becomes a synonym for excuse. I know it's kind of tight, but it's right. And I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to me too. Remember, I was sitting by Bethany when this started coming to me. And, and, and watching her watching her die, watching her take that last breath, it, it, it did something to me. I thought watching her mother take her last breath did something to me, but watching Bethany do it was ten times, ten times more powerful. Something about it. And her saying, Daddy, don't let me down. Get out and make a difference. You know what? From the book of Yemen, get your butts out of the way. Quit sitting on your butts. <coughs> Move the butts to the side. And just do it. I like Nike. Just do it. Amen? So now watch this. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to build me for 2019, if I'm going to build me, here's the first thing we've got to do. What I've got to do, I think about myself, is watch this. Building a better me. Y'all say building a better me. Don't point better. anybody else. <coughs> building a better me. Watch this. In Philippians, watch several things of a good report. And it goes down the list. I'm going to go down this in a minute. Think, meditate, muse on these things. Let it be in your mind constantly. If you want the mind of Christ, the attitude of Christ, Christ was the Word of God. Christ meditated on the Word of God all the time. It was in his mind. It came out of his mouth. He operated through the Word of God. So now, so now watch this. Watch this. I love the message with how it says it. Watch this. Summing it all up, friends, 
I'd say you will do your best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not to curse. Put into practice what you've learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that. And God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Wow. How many spend five minutes a day, just five, we'll be realistic, because five is really actually unrealistic, it's probably more like hours. How many spend five, you ain't got to raise your hand, you spend five minutes a day thinking about how tough you got? How many spend five minutes a day thinking about how somebody done you wrong? How many spend five minutes a day thinking about coulda, shoulda, woulda, and beating yourself up? How many spend five minutes a day thinking, I sure wish I hadn't of blank, blank, blank? Or five minutes saying, I sure wish I had of done blank, blank, blank? You take all those five minutes, and for every five minutes that you think about that, remember, Negative thoughts weigh much heavier than positive thoughts in your brain. A negative thought weighs six to seven times what a positive thought weighs in your brain. And so it takes six, seven, eight, nine, ten positive thoughts to overcome one negative thought. That's not me talking. That's reality talking. So if I'm always thinking about how somebody done me wrong, how things could have been better, how things you know, could have, would have, should have, all this stuff, then 2019 is going to be the same year that 2018 was. That's a promise. If you, if you use the same mindset to correct the problem, it's the same mindset that got you in the problem. You'll never get out of the problem. It requires a different mindset to get out of the problem. So, instead of spending five minutes doing you wrong, and five minutes on shoulda, coulda, woulda, and five minutes I wish I had love, and five minutes I wish I had love, start meditating on the goodness of God. Matter of fact, here's my challenge. This year, whenever these negative thoughts begin to come on you, because I promise you, once they come on you, they consume you, and they consume your time, and they zap your energy, they zap your emotional energy, they zap your physical energy, they zap your spiritual energy, they actually wear you down. Next time you feel one of these coming on, instead of, of engaging with that thought, or that thought process, here's what I want you to do. Start praising God and start thinking about His goodness. You know, I'm getting real. This is as real as it gets. You know, when I get thinking about the shoulda, coulda, woulda, for Bethany, well, if we'd have caught it faster, if we'd have done this, if we'd have done that, she would still be here, blah, 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 and on and on and on and on. And I'm not going to look at my good blah, 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 and it's not going to say all the things I keep hearing in my head. And when I hear that, I start to go, wait a minute. She's feasting. At the feet of Jesus. She never had full brain capacity while she was down here because she was damaged or got brain damage at two years old. As soon as she walked over into heaven, stepped over, she had full brain capacity. Matter of fact, you know what? When you step into heaven, you're going to have full brain capacity. We only use just a small bit of our brain, just a small bit. All of us really good. Can you imagine all of a sudden, poof, everything's opened? You know, I guarantee you, I, I, I've been living and I talk about it. First thing she did when she stepped over to heaven and her, her mind went poop. She went, well, that's what dad was talking about. <laughs> well, that's what mama was talking about. Oh, I got it now. And so instead of the negatives, I'll either do something humorous and or I'll start saying, you know what? She's at the feet of Jesus. She wouldn't want to come back now if she had the opportunity because she's in a place now where she's safe. 
where there's no harm, nothing else can go wrong. The Bible gives us that promise in Isaiah 57 that he takes those young, he takes those before their time because he's preventing them from getting something worse going on in their life. And so, so he's, he's, it's mercy. And so I, I, so I just start thanking God for his mercy. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for taking her. And thank you. And every day when we pray, I used to pray for her every day when we pray, when we do the Lord's Prayer, uh, I always uh, throw in some other stuff. And so as I'm doing the Lord's Prayer, I always say, Lord, touch Lynn and I that we have wisdom and understanding how to handle Bethany, how to lead her, and how to be there for her to help her through this cancer. And then I stop and I pray for Bethany. And I say, Lord, give us, give Bethany the strength she needs. And Lord, help, help her to manage and get through this as we help her, God. And now, since she died, you know what I say? Every morning, every morning, when I get to that spot where Bethany's at, when I get to our spot, I say, Lord, help us to heal. Thank us for you helping us heal through this. And Lord, touch Linda and touch her lungs and the damaged lung and the pneumonia and the blood clots, touch all that. Then I get to Bethany, here's all I'll say is, Lord, I thank you that through your wisdom and your mercy, you allowed my baby be with you. Thank you for loving her so much that you took her from all this pain. And I thank you, God. Now, I can dwell on the negative. I can dwell on the positive. You know what? You know what the difference is? When I get to that prayer, I feel good. And all day long, whenever that negative comes, I go, thank you, Lord, for getting her. Thank you, Lord, for, for healing her totally. Thank you, God, she doesn't have to worry about this cancer anymore. Thank you, Lord, that next time I go to the cancer center, I'll be there as a minister, not as a, not as a tenant. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Whatever is true, honest, noble, thank on these things. If you can turn it around in your mind, your attitude will change. And when your attitude changes, then your actions change. So, so here we go. Watch this. I love this. I'm getting ready to close. I told you I can't. It's, it's a lot. It's a whole lot. But I'm trying. I'm trying to condense it. I can't condense it. So I just said, okay, I'll just put it in separate parts. I love this. As a man thank you, so is he. Think about that. Proverbs 23 and 7. What do you think about yourself? But every time I see it, I think about Daniel. Daniel, bless his heart, he was the, he was the runt of the family. But every time he looked at that mirror, he saw that lion. And then he said, we'll be in the sheriff's office. I said, son, do you really want to do that? Yes, sir. And then he's in the sheriff's office, and he calls me after he'd been in the sheriff's office for about a month. I'm, at, I'm eating out with my wife, and he goes, Daddy, pray for me. I said, why? He says, I'm home right now. I said, why? They sent me home. I said, as dads can only say, why should he rock? <laughs> Who'd you make mad? He said, no. He said, I got caught up in a domestic, and he said nobody was there to help. And he said, by the time my backup got there, I was sitting on the ground with a gun, held on the man that had handcuffs on the woman, and they were trying, still trying to fight me and each other. And he said, he said the state patrolman came, and the sheriff came, and the Washington City cop came to help stop this, because somebody would have got killed that day. And, I said, and all of a sudden, my heart dropped. And I said, and he said, my, 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 my chief deputy said, Daniel, go home. Just rest. I said, well, how you doing, buddy? He says, I'm doing okay, Dad. I said, did it get you? He said, well, I got to admit, I'm a little shaken up. He said, but it's okay. I said, well, how are you doing? He said, well, I got wet. I'm out in the rain. We're out in the rain with all this going on. He said, but it'll be okay, Dad. And I hung up the phone and, <clears throat> and cried right there in the restaurant. But... Then he decided, that's not good enough. I ought to be undercover. Go buy and sell drugs in Greenville and go back to Washington and do my undercover stuff. I said, okay, son. You got anything else better than that you can do? I ought to be a sniper. Okay, that's cool. Not. You got anything else, any dangerous you can find? Well, I want to go to Afghanistan and be a contractor. But all his life, that little kitten saw that lion. And he still sees that lion. The only difference is now it's a lion looking at a lion. Why do you see me look in the mirror? You see a kitten? You see frail? You 
see somebody that can't make a difference? Do you see somebody that can't listen to God? Somebody that prayers aren't being answered? Somebody that just you just can't handle it? Or do you see a lion? When I look in the mirror, when I see a lion, he may be snackletooth, but he's there. I might see Clarence the cross-eyed lion every now and then, but it's still a lion. How many remember Clarence the cross-eyed lion? Y'all quit making me tell my age. <laughs> Remember that show, Doc Tari or whatever it was? And that, okay, never mind. Okay. As you see yourself, that's how you're going to be. As you think about yourself, that's how you're going to be. Yeah, I know, when I this one I talked about, you know, when, when I was, I thought I was tough. But then going through all that year with Bethany, good God, I, I, I didn't have to reach in and deep breathe that tumor. She had a tumor the size of my fist. And going in every day and reaching in that tumor and pulling out that dead cancer and then docking her and putting diapers on it because it was so big. And I kept thinking, God, I don't know what in the world is going on, but this is, ah, uh, You know, and, and then it got to where I didn't have to wear a mask anymore because I could smell it and bother me like it did before. And then it got to where... Where, where, where it just got, it got, it got simpler and found better ways and got better ways to get things handled. And then I realized God was doing something inside of me that I didn't even know he was doing. Now I think about it in hospice and I think about watching her. And some of y'all know this, some of you probably, you might hear it a hundred times from me again, but that song that Sierra was singing, Decline, <coughs> she sang at the funeral. If, I don't know if you know if you saw Sierra, but she really grabbed a hold of her granddaddy and held on tight toward the end of that song. Because at the end of that song, when she said the last chorus, it's not about when you, what, what's on the other side. It's about the climb. And when she said it's about the climb, Bethany took her last breath. And now when I hear that song, I put it in my car and play it. it tears me up. I put it in my car and play it because I said, I'm not going to run from this. I'm going to grow from this. I put it in my car and I play it all the time. I play the, the funeral songs all the time. Not all the time. But I say about once a day. I play with those funeral songs. And I, and, and I, I go through those emotions. And I felt that day sitting right there. And I, and I, and I, I just keep on. And, and when the negative comes, I keep trying to push in positives, 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 positives. Faith, positives. <laughs> because I refuse to be consumed. Instead, I want to rise above it and be that light. So how do you think about yourself? Everybody. You ain't got to tell anybody beside you. You ain't got your, your spouse, your, your parents, your, your children. You may not even know how you feel about yourself on the inside. Just think about it. How do you see yourself when you look in that mirror? So now, watch this. Watch this. You have to disciple your thinking. You know why? Because Satan... Satan's biggest lever. Who was it said, give me a lever and I can move the world? What was his name? Yeah. Give me a lever and I can move the world. The biggest lever in Satan's toolbox is your own mind. All he's got to do is talk it. And your mind, if it's not trained and disciplined, your mind will take it and run with it. And next thing you know, you're run over, run down. It's terrible. So, so watch this. You got to discipline your thinking. You, you, you got to quit allowing negatives to dominate your mind. Because if you allow negatives, remember, a negative is six to seven times heavier than a positive. It requires six to seven times more room in your brain than a positive. So think about it. A lot of our brains may be clogged up with negatives. God help me to clog my brain and get some free up some space in there for some positives. Okay. So now watch this. Watch, watch, watch. In order for the negatives not to dominate you, you have to take deliberate action. And watch this. Watch. Replace the negative thoughts with positive and keep an optimistic outlook. <coughs> I was at a funeral home the other day. I, I was taking Bethany's urn back because they were going to take those little lockets. I got lockets for all the kids that say, uh, uh, <coughs> say,
something like near my heart, or one says something, and it's got sister and, and aunt and daughter, and so it's got got it's got a little bit of her ashes in each one of those, and and uh, when DC went on the cruise, the Christmas cruise, I kept getting pictures of them holding up Bethany's locket and saying, "We've got her with us, Dad." And of course, you know you got her with you here, but there was just something special, therapeutic, about being able to take her with you. And so, but this lady walks, rides up to me, and I hadn't seen this lady in years, and, and I think she was at the funeral, I'm not sure, but she knew about Beth, and she come up, and I was talking with another counselor who was, who was sitting there, we were talking, he saw me, and he pulls up, and we're talking, and, and here comes this lady, and she goes, I reached into what to say. So she goes, what are you doing here? I thought you buried your daughter a week or so ago. And so instead of being sarcastic, and instead of being mean, I just let the good times roll. And I said, oh, didn't you hear? She said, well, I said, Paul's got a way away plan. <laughs> I made the last payment today. I'm going to pick her up. <laughs> And that lady just went, and she put her hands on her steering wheel, and she just went, and that counselor behind me, he was rolling. I mean, he was, and I don't know if she was looking at me or looking at him rolling, but, <laughs> and when she walked off, that counselor looked at me, another Christian, he said, that was awesome. <laughs> I said, dude, I can't let it tear my heart out. I got to do something to keep it from tearing my heart out. He said, he said, there you go. Keep that attitude. So, so. So now, now, now watch this. You know, all right, James 1 and 8 says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, meaning one day I'm the lion, one day I'm the kitten. One day I got it together, one day I don't. One day I'm going to take it, the next day I'm not. And if you keep that kind of attitude, then you'll never see that lion. You may see him pass by, but you won't see, see that lion. You know, so, so here we go. Number one, you got to think better things. Think. Think. Thing. Number two, I love this. So faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. What are you hearing all the time? <laughs> what are you hearing? Matter of fact, what are you telling yourself? You know, I, I spent... 26 years trying to get my head to listen. And she spent the last year trying to get me to listen. And they diagnosed her with cancer. She pops up. She starts saying all this profound stuff. And I said, good God, girl, where are you hearing this stuff? And she said, Dad, don't you listen to your own sermons? And I said, well, I thought I did. <laughs> That's some good stuff there. She said, yes. And then she came and said, remember last Sunday, the Sunday before, blah, blah. She said, she said, y'all can try doing it sometime. It really works. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, I'll be honest with you. I was double-minded because I had the faith. But at the same time, I would see these reports. And nowadays, you get hooked up with the right kind of stuff. And we get the daily reports and the daily blood work. And we had everything right there in front of us, my charts. We had my chart. And we had everything right in front of us. And so the doctor was saying this. And we come and say, what the chart says. It says, quit playing doctor. You just listen to me now. And so, okay. And so we go back and forth. And I look at the chart or I look at her or I see the way she acted. And it was double-minded. And I go, Lord, you got to help me. And I get around her and she go, damn. There's no need to cry. Dad, God's got this. There's no need to be worried. God's got this. I'm going, I spent 26 years telling her that. And now she's going to spend this time pumping me up. And she did. And everybody around her, when she died, people said, I didn't realize she was that sick. I said, you know why? Because she would not tell you. She wouldn't talk about the good things. So now, so now, here it goes. Quit listening 
listening to the negative and the destructive stuff. If all you want, look, look, if all you're going to do is be a vessel, please listen carefully, don't be offended. If all you can't, if you can't wait to hear the latest gossip and spread the latest, and it just keeps coming to you all the time, all the negative, negative, destructive, you're no longer a vessel, you're a trash can. It's tight, <laughs> I'm telling you, but it's good. I refuse to be a trash can. No, I'm not Oscar the Grouch. You are a vessel of God. And if all you're going to do is feed it with negative and destruction, negative and destruction, then you know what you do? Whoa, what in the world? Come on back here, baby. Oh, where'd I go? I got happy when I said that one. Let's see here. Where'd it go? Come on, come on. Where'd it go? There it is. It'll dwarf your spirit. If all you do is hear negative, and then if you repeat it, the proverb says that you, you, when you get this stuff, stop it and protect protect those that's harming. Protect them. If all you do is just take it in and take it in and can't wait to hear the latest and you can't wait to tell the latest, remember, it's no longer a vessel. You become a trash can, and I don't, God doesn't have the streets of gold lined with trash cans. There's no light service in heaven. You, uh, it, uh, whatever this place is that does our lights is going to be out of business. The old companies are going to be out of business. The trash service is going to be out of business. Okay, we must listen to the good and resist the bad. I don't mean be unrealistic. When you hear something, if you hear something that you might need to go tell somebody, look, I need to talk to you because here's what here's what's going around, this, and, and, and you need to know this because I don't mean telling somebody to go to the person and go, you know, you're, this is what I'm hearing, and you might need to hear this because this isn't good, and you might can put a stop to it. Or, without even going to that person, you just stop it. Just stop it. Just put a stop to it. Every time somebody gives you a negative, give them seven positives. But, you know, you know just give them seven positives because if they give you, watch this. Remember, everything after the before the but doesn't count. So if they give you a negative, you go but and give them seven positives. Guess what you just did? You canceled out the negative. It works good, doesn't it? Think about it. Okay. We must hear from the Lord. Now watch this. I, I know this is this this sounds kind of kind of kind of tight, but I'm telling you, we want 2019 to be the best possible year. It can Telling you how to make it, see it happen. Get ready. When I build a better me, watch this. When I build a better me, I build a better marriage. When I build a better me, I build a better family. When I build a better me, I build a better church. When I build a better me, I build a better workplace. It's amazing how things change for me when my attitude changes. It's amazing how things look different when my perspective changes. It's amazing how things get all different around me. You know, you remember that little story I told about two guys going out west to sell shoes and they had <coughs> hundreds of shoes in their covered wagon and and uh, they actually, they were going to sell shoes. They were actually going to sell sell shoes to the Indians. And the Indians didn't have any shoes. They just had moccasins. And so, so they had hundreds of shoes in their wagon. And they got up in the morning. And the Indians were around with their arrows and bows and ready to fight. And they're circling the wagon. And one buddy gets up, looks out, and goes, "Oh no, we're dead." He goes, and "Wakes up the bus. You better come out and look at this. You better look at this." And he comes out and sees all those Indians going around the warpath and says, hey, we're rich! Come on up here, BJ. Play something. God wants this year to be the best. God wants this year to be the best for us. But in order for it to be the best for us, we have to do
do something about it. We have to sell in our hearts that things are going to change within us. And once we settle within us that things are going to change, then God does something special for all of us. If I'm a better me, then I'm a better dad. I'm a better husband. I'm a better servant. And everybody I come in contact with, every relation that I touch will be better. Because I built a better I mean, I tell a couple, so I do a couple counseling. I hear it all the time. Well, if he would just change, or if she would just change, and I tell them, how about do me a favor? And they said, well, as a matter of fact, don't just do me a favor, do your marriage a favor. And I said, well, I said, how about take your spouse off of your potter's wheel? And you climb up on Take your spouse off the wheel. Quit trying to make them what you want them to be. You climb up on the wheel and say, God, make me what I need to be. And when you climb up on the potter's wheel and you ask God to be what I need to be, it's amazing how that spouse changes. God. God is so profound in how he handles things. That's all saying. Y'all get loud, I want to hear you. God, I want this year. 
everybody else off my wheel. And let me climb on it. Because God, I want to be the best that you can use. I'm willing and you're able. And I give myself to you. This year will be the best. Not because I said it. Not because the preacher said it. But because I climbed up on the potter's wheel. And did my part. I thank you God. For all that you're doing. And what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Give Lord a hand clap of praise. Now if you have a special need, come on up here and we'll pray for you. You want to just pray, you want to talk to God, that's fine. I, I, I've been lately been having mass prayer because I've been wanting to make sure that, that the message got out and the people got a chance to pray. But if you've got something you want to pray about, you got something that you and God want to talk about, go ahead. We're not going to rush. It's okay. It, it, is, it is only uh, 10 minutes to 12. It's okay. If you want to pray. God is awesome. God is powerful. This year is our best. Somebody say it. Don't say will be. Say it is our best. Amen. You know, I've done a lot of service, guys. And especially, it seems the Marines are the best at this. But I have not seen one Marine come back and tell me, well, I told the drill sergeant I thought I'd do it a different way. Did you ever try that done? No. Because <laughs> he was making you, he was breaking you down and saying, boot camp, it, boot camp is the potter's wheel for the military. The initial potter's wheel. They break you down and build you back up. Well, guess what? Don't be telling God how to do it. Just say, God, I'm here. God, I'm here. I want this year to be my best but for you. And I want to make a difference in people's lives. So, God, don't say this with me. I know it sounds kind of tough, but it's so true. God, I refuse to be Satan's trash king.